China's own goal to ban Australian coal gives traders a massive free kick. The import of coal from Australia to China is dominated by metallurgical coal used in steel production. Only about 30% of the coal exported to China is energy coal, and it makes up only a fraction of the domestic coal that China uses to generate electricity, overall it imports less than 10% of its needs. However, in some more industrialized provinces with state-of-the-art generation, Australian coal is a key source of energy due to its quality, leading to greater efficiency and lower emissions. China, in part as a result of the ban on Australian coal, pays a much higher price for lower quality coal. This attaches importance to Australian coal, in addition to simple tonnages sold to China. While the Chinese authorities are trying to downplay any link between the ban on Australian coal and the electricity shortage that is now being felt, there is a very transparent Signal 5 the price signal about the impact of the ban. As a result of the ban, China's energy companies are seeking to provide alternative supplies, with imports from Indonesia, Russia and South Africa rising sharply. So is the price of their coal. The price of Australian thermal coal fell sharply during the pandemic to less than $1.50 a tonne, but has since recovered to around $1.80 a tonne. However, after the ban on Australian coal, this price differed significantly from the prices received by other suppliers. For example, South African coal is now sold to China for $1.100 a tonne, up 65% from earlier this year. Thus China, in part as a result of the ban on Australian coal, pays a much higher price for lower quality coal. The world's largest producer of sea coal is Glencore, which is also Australia's largest exporter of thermal coal. Glencore has roots in the trade and marketing of commodities, but it also has a large coal portfolio. While Australian operations dominate they account for almost two-thirds of total production, it also has mines in South Africa and Colombia. Glencore and other miners and traders will consider the impact of China's ban on coal prices and see as many opportunities as threats. If the cost of South African or Indonesian coal is $1.20 more than a ton of Australian, the obvious arbitrage is to sell more expensive products to China and replace them either for domestic use or to perform contracts with other customers by mining Australian coal. Dot Glencore is a producer of value beyond volume, so won't worry if it produces a little less, but is offset by the price and, having almost half a century of trading and marketing experience, is in a better position than any of the coal exporters to profit from arbitration opportunities. Australian coal is stuck on land, unable to unload in Chinese ports. Credit Darren Potaman DJP this profit will be increased if, as it happens, Australian manufacturers, but obviously Glencore, do not close significant capacity as a result of China's ban. Chinese metallurgical plants, affected by rising coal prices and high iron ore prices, have found themselves in the midst of Chinese sanctions against Australian products. Their profitability will be negligible, even if they follow the path driven by a stimulus rebound in China's economy to produce record tons of steel. That is why the mills are complaining to BHP and Rio and their own authorities about the prices of their raw materials and are asking the authorities to investigate the sharp rise in prices and deal with possible violations of Chinese rules and laws. The problems of mills and power generators are not BHP and Rio, it is the nature of goods traded all over the world and the sophistication of traders in these markets, including China. Focusing on a commodity Australian coal which due to its quality and reliability of producers has an impact on the market outside its market share, China has forced Australian producers to look for other customers and played into the hands of traders by creating compelling opportunities for arbitrage as part of alternative pricing.